brand new song, which is out today, features Ukraine's President Zelensky, and it's called Same Here, and it's so beautiful. Just call me close-minded or whatever. I don't want to hear it, Raina. Oh, okay, close-minded is one thing, but I'm sorry, you just called me screwed up? With some of your thinking, I think you're very screwed up. Okay, we're talking about... I'm not a talking about a girl, a girl who lost her legs in volleyball. I'm not talking about that. I was talking about crime, and then you bring up Trump as if I am Trump's biggest fan. How long ago was that? Fifteen minutes ago. Well, what oh, are, different. What are we talking? About, what are we talking about now? That you needed I'm not to tell me. Talking about anything. I don't know what you're talking about. I just tried. I, I just tried to, to share a funny video with you. Well, I don't want to. See and you started funny screaming video. and telling me how screwed up I was. Yes. And that is based on what did I do? You said you're screwed up ideas. And so that's your response to, I sent you a video yesterday of an interview with Chris Hedges. I'm sorry. What, what is the sound? What is that supposed to signify? Have you seen the thing? Just because you're educated doesn't make you correct. You've got a lot of stupid people with educations. That's all I'm saying. Okay. And I don't, uh, I, that other, whatever his name is, jerk, he's so stupid. Wait. I don't like him at all. So I'm not even looking at it. Okay, so I sent you a, a thoughtful note saying if, if you wanted to try to understand my perspective on some of well, these things. Well, I don't. Things, Thank you. Maybe, oh, so you didn't even listen to it. Yes, I did, the but whole, I don't want to listen to it. Okay, so. But Brenda, that, shut up, please. But Why don't you just go I am leave going. me alone? I am going, but that's what you're, that's why you're calling me screwed up. I'm, you get screwed up because you get involved in all anything that is negative is what you're into. Anything. Because lots of people believe that Biden, I mean, it's beyond belief. It's They have evidence that Biden blew up the Nord Stream pipeline. <laughs> oh, Raina. I mean, I hope you've heard that Fox, the they have the recordings of all of these um, commentators on Fox News that think people are stupid, but then they still put out this information because stupid people will believe it. I hope you've heard that. I'm not sure what you're talking about. I just, I just was talking about an article written by Seymour Hirsch, who is um, Pulitzer Prize winning all the way since the Vietnam is. War. Well, okay, but because you don't know who he is, that makes me stupid. Yes. Okay. Raina, I've had enough. Please just go. I just wanted to ask if I was screwed up because, like... I sent you that link yesterday thinking maybe you'd see my point of view on some of these things. And so that's why you said you're screwed up with your crazy ideas because of that. It was an interview with Russell Brand and uh, Chris Hedges. I believe it was yesterday. So that's what that's based on. Do you think it makes me a dangerous person? I know you're recording. Which, oh, I'm more than recording. It's going to, like, really blow up. Yeah. Because I, I want to understand. I want you, you're not going to understand. I don't even want to discuss it with you. Well, obviously, that's why okay. it's I'm not, I know you're trying to record me so you can flaunt it, whatever you want to do. Flaunt it? Whatever. You, you think I'm proud of this? <laughs> it's more like a cry for help. Like, like how much worse could it get? And what does the future hold if... I have stupid people calling me stupid when all I was trying to do was have a conversation. I mean, I'm sorry to call you stupid, but you did just call me stupid and I'm really at a loss. And I'm not calling you stupid because of what you know and don't know. I'm calling you stupid because you just shut down when I open my mouth. If I say a sentence, you bite my head off.
it's just an attempt at, I want to call it an analysis, because I'm really at a loss. Are you writing an article for Substack? It is obvious that American business can become the locomotive that will once again push forward global economic growth. We have already managed to attract attention and have cooperation with such giants of the international financial and investment world as BlackRock, JP Morgan and Golden Sachs, such American brands as Starling or Westinghouse have already become part of our Ukrainian way. Your brilliant defense systems such as HIMARS or Bradley's are already uniting our history of freedom with your enterprises. We are waiting for Patriots. We are looking closely at Abrams. Thousands of such examples are possible. And everyone can become a big business by working with Ukraine in all sectors, from weapons and defense to construction, from communication to agriculture, from transport to IT, from banks to medicine. And I believe that freedom must always win. There were two things that happened after Vietnam. Uh, one, there was a kind of reckoning uh, that, uh, that the country asked questions about themselves, or we did as Americans, that we hadn't asked before. Um, there was a very, a kind of, let's call it a period of 10 or 15 years of anti-militarism because of the Vietnam War, uh, which then Ronald Reagan attempted to, uh, I think, successfully uh, restore the quote-unquote good name of war. The other thing is that the military uh, or the militarists realized that they had to abolish the draft, that if they were going to continue the policy of permanent war, they were going to have to fight it with poor kids who didn't have any options and comprised a small largely powerless demographic uh, within the country in the single digits in terms of percentages. My, much of my own family on my mother's side comes from rural Maine, and they are the classic cannon fodder for the military. Unfortunately, I would also add, uh, they're quite susceptible to the propaganda, the flag-waving, gun-toting. I'm talking about my own family, um, but that's another issue. So those two things happened. Uh, and that allowed them to continue uh, with war. Now, I covered the revolutions in Eastern Europe. I was in Czechoslovakia, East Germany, Romania, 1989. So I was there with the collapse of the Soviet Union and acutely aware of the promises that have been made to Gorbachev not to expand NATO beyond the borders of a unified Germany. In fact, we were all talking about the peace dividend, which shows you how naive we all were, believing that there would not be this necessity to commit such large quantities of money, material, research, uh, and human capital into the war industry. Well, the war industry had no intention of going away. Uh, that's why it pushed the expansion of NATO, uh, although, of course, as I think you've mentioned uh, on your show, the promises were made not to do this, a violation of the promises made to Moscow. And I think that expansion of NATO was pushed for two reasons. One, it made the arms industry billions in profits because 
countries, Poland, etc., had to reconfigure their militaries to be compatible with NATO equipment, but also hubris. Uh, that's when the, the United States began to talk about the unipolar world, which is uh, just a fancy way of saying we dominate. Whatever we do, we can do anything we want, and nobody uh, can get in our way. Those two things led to the conflict with Ukraine. Um, and just to close, the the... Uh, I think that there's a, a, a deep understanding now within, certainly within the U.S. military, that they cannot win a war of attrition against Russia. Russia has bled and bled profusely, uh, no question. But a war of attrition, Ukraine can't win. Uh, and I was in the first Gulf War. I was in southern Iraq after the war. I was in the Shiite uprising in Basra, and then I was a, taken prisoner by the Iraqi Republican Guard. But but being there, uh, we had no clean water, we had no electricity, uh, the schools were bombed, were destroyed, the hospitals were destroyed. That is a classic tactic that the U.S. military uses. It's what the Russians are using, and that's why you see this panic in sending M1 Abrams tanks. We can talk about that later, which will be largely useless, uh, talking about uranium-depleted weapons. Now you have through Poland, lobbying to send F-15, F-16 fighter jets. Um, very, very uh, dangerous. But of course, <clears throat> as we saw with Afghanistan, they, they, it doesn't matter whether they can win. The Washington Post published the Afghan papers, which illustrated that the military and political leadership in the United States knew, at best, Afghanistan would be a, a stalemate. But the war went on for many years. This was also true in Vietnam because war is a business, very lucrative, Raytheon, Halliburton, uh, Northrop Grumman, etc. And, and, and we just have been unable to push back against this military, uh, this militarism that is disemboweling the country. If you drive across the United States, our cities and towns and communities are just desolate. And we got to get over that. Uh, we also have to get over this kind of moral purity where somebody who doesn't agree with us on COVID vaccines or whatever it is, we'd never talk to again and we won't be in the same room with. Art is the quickest way to somebody's heart and a chance to sort of reach the, the folks in our country that are maybe you know, getting inundated with news and facts. You need to hear this song, every word of it. I was going to try not to cry, but um, I might. I would like to thank all of the American people that are supporting Ukraine, the Congress, the president, the TV uh, channels, the journalists. If they do not support Ukraine, they will uh, lose NATO, they will lose uh, the clout of the United States, they will lose the leadership position that they are enjoying in the world, uh, that they are enjoying for a very fair reason, and they will lose the support of the country with 40 millions of population, with millions of children. Are American children any different than ours? Don't Americans enjoy the, the same things uh, as we do? I don't think we're that different. If it happens so that Ukraine, uh, due to various opinions and weakening and depleting of assistance, uh, 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 loses, Russia is going to enter Baltic states, NATO member states, and then the U.S. will have to send their sons and daughters exactly the same way as we are sending their sons and daughters to war, and they will have to fight because it's uh, NATO that we're talking about, and they will be dying. I was going to try not to cry, but um, I might. Global economic growth. We have already managed to attract attention and have cooperation with such giants of the international financial and investment world as BlackRock, J.P. Morgan and Golden Sachs, such American brands as Starling or Westinghouse have already become part of our Ukrainian way. I was going to try not to cry, but um, I might. That John Brennan was always very close to Diane Feinstein, personally close. He liked and respected her until she started to ask questions. And when 
Senator Feinstein ordered her investigators to get to the bottom of this torture program. It got too close for comfort. And Brennan, in what I think is probably unprecedented, ordered the CIA to, to hack into the Senate Intelligence Committee's computer systems to see what it was that they were working on, to see what it was that they had uncovered in this investigation. They were spying on American senators who were yeah. investigating them. It's insane. And then when Feinstein found out about it, you, you probably recall, she, she took to the floor of the Senate in a very unusual move, and she criticized the CIA and John Brennan by name very specifically. It raised a lot of eyebrows here. And in unofficial Washington, we really didn't know what it was at the time that had spurred this on. So word finally got out that Brennan had ordered his people to hack into the Senate Intelligence Committee's computer systems. Feinstein, to her credit, reported this to Eric Holder as a crime. She filed a crimes report with the Justice Department. And then Brennan filed a crimes report against Feinstein's investigators, saying that they had illegally obtained highly classified national defense information, and he wanted them charged under the Espionage Act, that, that, that they had a torture program that was patently unconstitutional. Later on, thanks to Senator Feinstein, we learned things like, rectal hydration using hummus, for example. We learned about using a power drill to, to threaten to lobotomize prisoners, Russian roulette being played against prisoners. We learned about all these things that were extrajudicial, that were never approved, and for which nobody was ever prosecuted or even investigated. And then, like I said a moment ago, the sad postscript to all this was Eric Holder just said, now, now, everybody go back to your corners, Nobody's going to be investigated or prosecuted. Let's just move on. Well, the CIA should have been prosecuted. John Brennan should have been prosecuted for breaking into the Senate Intelligence Committee's computer systems. This report that what was released by the Senate Intelligence Committee was not the torture report. The torture report is more than 5,000 pages long. It's never been released. I would like to thank all of the American people that are supporting Ukraine, the Congress, the President, the TV uh, channels, the journalists. If they do not support Ukraine, they will uh, lose NATO, they will lose uh, the clout of the United States, they will lose the leadership position that they are enjoying in the world, uh, that they are enjoying for a very fair reason, and they will lose the support of the country with 40 millions of population, with millions of children. Are American children any different than ours? Don't Americans enjoy the, the same things uh, as we do? I don't think we're that different. If it happens so that Ukraine, uh, due to various opinions and weakening and depleting of assistance, uh, 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 loses, Russia is going to enter Baltic states, NATO member states, and then the U.S. will have to send their sons and daughters exactly the same way as we are sending their sons and daughters to war, and they will have to fight because it's uh, NATO that we're talking about, and they will be dying.